All right, now I'm gonna edit this. Uh, I'm gonna edit this Lanai shot real quick here. This is a pretty simple shot, but again, it's uh, really overcast. It's not a nice day outside, and uh, we've got a lot of small little details to bring in, like these uh, little holes everywhere. That's gonna be pretty time consuming, but generally, as a rule, I like to give myself about five minutes per image. I like to give myself about five minutes per image. And even though I usually don't come close to that, uh, if you give yourself a, a deadline or a timeline to work in, you'll typically be able to accomplish the job faster, right? If you're just more relaxed um, and uh, you're not really focused on time management, it's easier to waste time and not take it as serious as you should. And of course, it's not about um, it's not about cutting corners or anything like that. It's about being as efficient as possible while maintaining uh, high quality and consistency. That's what I really stress in my course on uh, real estate Photoshop for real estate. So again, if you want to. If you want to learn post-production for real estate, specifically luxury real estate, which can apply to, you know, pretty much any form of architecture, uh, you know, low-end real estate, high-end real estate, or just architecture, city photography, whatever you want, you know, all the techniques apply across the board to pretty much anything. If you want to learn that stuff kind of from beginning to end to see basic workflows all the way up to advanced workflows. Um, I would definitely consider checking out my course right now on Teachable. And yeah, I got to show that right now. So links are going to be in the description or comments. Um, in that course, I, I kind of, I go, I take my time uh, and show it, show you exactly what I'm doing, but I'm right now I'm just going through these raw images and trying to see if there's any others that I, I want to include in my PSD right now. I think for now I'm just gonna kind of go with these. I've got this this base that doesn't have a flash and then I'm using this flash based raw image to bring in. I'm just gonna paint this in. some broad strokes there and then I'm going to start working on the mask here and uh, of course I've got a little bit of camera shake here so come in here and just try and adjust this pixel by pixel move into another area and see if it affected it negatively in another area sometimes you'll you'll uh, adjust the uh, camera shake on the left hand side and then on the right hand side it's all messed up you know i don't use the auto align function in photoshop because it's kind of hit or miss sometimes it'll work perfectly and it will align all of your raw images together and completely get rid of that camera shake and then other times it just will not work at all. So I really don't rely on it too much. I try to do everything manually for the most part. That way I have, you know, as much control over the image as possible. And again, this is a great example of why you need an editor, you know? a great example of why you need to have professionals doing each job you've got a professional photography uh, excuse me a professional photographer and you've got an editor and you've got somebody to deal with customer service as well you don't want to have the editors or post-production artists have to have to stop working on images to handle phone calls or emails you know, everybody wants a small operation, but if you really want to grow and expand your business, you're going to have to start utilizing other people. You know, most of these 
quote-unquote photography companies are just one person um, and it's it's really not a company um, because they're not doing the job that's needed and the job to get the results needed um, th to get the proper results uh, you need multiple professionals to really bring it all together you need several people um, you know you can you can keep the overhead low you don't need to rent out a, a photography space or something you know for some so people can walk in you know you don't need any you don't need any of that it's you know most most things are done by word of mouth you can always do advertising and stuff like that but everybody wants their operation to be lean financially and that's great, but just don't cut the corners. Don't cut those necessary corners that you really do need to have um, to produce those professional results that are going to get you in the magazines, you know, that are going to get you featured in real estate magazines in your city or town or some nationwide architecture magazine or whatever, you know. It's always a cool feeling to have your work featured in big publications, you know, and you never know what photos are going to be used, right? You might think you're just doing another job for an agent, and then five or six months later, you find out that those photos you took and produced were placed in uh, some kind of real estate magazine or something that a lot of people are going to see. You know, and your name is going to be all over it. So always aim for consistency. Always aim for great results, you know. Whether you're the editor or the photographer, you know, you should all, all should, everybody should be on the same page. You know, it's pretty automated when it comes to this, uh, you know, real estate photography in general, doesn't require a ton of communication between each other. At least not when everybody is doing their job as they should be, right? It's pretty simple. Photographer goes out, lands some clients, schedules everything, goes and captures the images, puts them on a server, puts them on an FTP or something, send out the emails, send out the emails to the, to the editors, editors start working on them, editors finish them, editors send them out, somebody that handles invoicing charges the person, you know, it's, it's not complex to run a photography business, it's really not. But if you want to stick around year after year and grow and expand, you have to know what you're doing. Everybody calls themselves a photographer these days, and they're really not. They really are not photographers. They, don't, they, they know very little about photography, proper framing, composition. All they did was see something that looked pretty easy to get into, and they went out and spent you know, 3,000 bucks on some hardware, some cameras, some lenses. And, you know, a couple weeks later, they're calling, calling themselves a photographer, you know. It's kind of a joke. Takes a really, really skillful eye to capture photography. It's not something everybody excels at. I mean, I've had photographers that have the latest and greatest camera equipment, you know, the best from Nikon, the best from Canon, and they're garbage. They were the worst, some of the worst, um, quote unquote, photographers we've used. They're lazy. They just, they just want to build them, build themselves up, you know, they're just, they're really just selling themselves as a product. They're not selling the product itself, which is photography. You know, um, I'm actually going to come in here, though. 
I'm going to select this whole area right here. And these down here, uh, this is what I was talking about that was going to be time consuming. Again, you think a photographer wants to do this? No, a photographer is going to want to go out and take their photos and that's it. Photographer is not dealing with this. Nobody wants to deal with problems like this. It, you know, if you're just throwing stuff together in Lightroom, anybody can do that. Not everybody has the eye for this. Not everybody has the patience to put all this together, to remove all the flaws. I mean, it can be so tedious and time consuming to edit photos. You know, I've had images where, where it's taken like an hour and a half just to do one because of problems like this that I'm looking at right here. But, you know, that's, that's why you got to have good people in your corner. You got to hire good people that actually care about the work that they produce. Not just somebody that's looking for a paycheck, right? That person's probably not going to put out the best results. You know, it's important not to be married to your work, but at the same time, it's important that you try to achieve uh, a high quality every time, every single time, right? And trust me, that's not going to go unnoticed. If you're an editor or you're a post-production artist, the company that you're working for, the photographers that you're working with, uh, they're going to see that. Trust me, if, if they care about their work and they're looking at they're they're looking over the images, analyzing them once you've edited, the, edited, it, excuse me, edited the photos, um, they're going to see just how much effort it took um, to put into those photos to get to get the results that you got. Right. Because the, the photographers are the ones that are capturing the images and they're the ones going back to their house at night after the after the day is done, looking at the images, putting them in folders and uh, analyzing them, you know, the photographers, if they care, they'll see that they'll see the fact that it's going to be difficult to edit those images, especially if it was like cloudy outside or if it had a ton of problems like this one does. You know, my photographer always sees uh, the work that I put into these images. Uh, we've been doing this for over 13 years together, and he, all, you know, good work, it, it does not go unnoticed. If, if you work with good people that, uh, you know, care about others, they'll see what you did. And they will definitely appreciate it. And that goes a long way. That's going to help your career as an editor, as a post-production artist. It's going to help the company grow. It's going to make the real estate agents look great. And again, you know, it's kind of this, this cycle, right? It, if you can make the photographer look good, uh, the photographer is going to get more work. The more work the photographer gets, the more work you're going to get, you know? But as an editor, the problem that comes into play when you keep getting more and more work and expanding as a company is you can only edit so many photos each day. You can only spend so much time editing um, photos and stuff like that, you know? I mean, there, there's been times when we're busy in season and I've had to stay up literally the entire night just editing photos because it's, it's me... And like maybe one or two other editors, you know, and we've got like five or six photographers and they're all out there each day getting tons of properties and jobs. You know, there's only so much you can handle as an editor and a post-production artist. But that's when you need to start delegating and, you know, maybe transitioning more into a supervisor role and a management role as a post-production artist, right? Maybe that's, that's the point in your business when you're expanding so much that you transition into that role and you start to bring in other editors, right? And you start to train them. You kind of take them 
take them underneath you and uh, show them your little tricks, your little techniques. That way you can keep, keep uh, you know, you can continue to keep up with the demand, you know, because the last thing you want to have happen is expand so much that you have to start turning away jobs. You know, if, if you're the best in town, people, they'll, they'll want you, they'll, they'll pay for that quality. Cause I guarantee you, uh, the agents have experienced countless times hiring a, pho a photography company and getting really, really bad results. And then they'll hire you and pay twice the amount of money because they know that you are going to go out there and actually get the job done right and properly. And they won't have to reschedule a photo shoot right? Their time is valuable too. Their time is just as valuable as yours. They want to make, whoops, they want to make as much money as possible, you know? Um, so if they have to uh, reschedule a photo shoot because some photographer screwed it up, um, that's not good for them. So most of the time, Photog uh, real estate agents and homeowners, they'll, they'll seek out quality. Not every time, you know, uh, these days, everybody wants everything for nothing. But uh, most of the time, once they've once those agents and homeowners have been burned by having um, poor photography done, and they know that you're around and that you'll do the job right they'll they'll always pay for it at the end of the day and i'm not saying that you need to charge them an arm and a, arm and a leg or something like that but you know there's a reason that you should be charging a you know you're charging for quality that's what it needs to be about your work needs to speak for itself and it needs to be backed up by that quality you know um, but zooming in here, I think this looks pretty decent overall. There's a few like, you know, there's a few edges over here that I could, I can come in here and, uh, kind of edit. I mean, it's totally unnecessary. I really don't need to. Nobody's going to see this. Um, you know, it's not exactly 100% perfect. I could have spent a little bit more time, but overall it's decent. Again, really comes down to time management. How much time do you have? You know, how much time do you have to edit these images and uh, get them to the point where they need to be to where it's uh, acceptable, you know, and good enough for client delivery and stuff like that. But overall, I think this looks pretty good, all things considered. You know, maybe just come in here and clean up these little little spots. You know, remove that little crack. That doesn't look good to me. And again, nobody's going to see this, especially if the agents are looking at this on a virtual tour on a website. You know, they'll look at it from like this distance. They're not going to zoom in here on a 6K resolution photo and say, oh boy, what is this little spot right here? It's just not going to happen. But always try and f clean up as much as you can. You know, make sure you don't have soft images. Make sure that they're nice, sharp, and crisp. But, um, you know, right now I think that looks pretty decent. And uh, I'll do a, a review on this image, you know, before I actually send this out to the uh, client. I always take a look at my photos and, you know, make, make any necessary adjustments prior to client delivery to make sure that, you know, I ticked off all the boxes, you know, is it bright? Is it even, does it have the right amount of contrast? Does it have the, you know, a good, good color balance and white balance? Have I done a good job bringing out the furniture and the little furnishings and decorations in the image, you know, all that stuff, you know, kind of go over it with a fine tooth comb. But right now I think this image looks pretty decent. 